we can have isotopes with different numbers of neutrons. So let's get our normal carbon atom. It's got six protons and it's got six neutrons to bring the mass up to 12. Incidentally, we can call protons and neutrons, we can give them a general name, they're known as nucleons, in other words, things that exist in the nucleus. But we can have carbon atoms that exist with one more neutron than that again. And this is carbon-13. It's got six protons and, you guessed it, seven neutrons. By the way, you could see this called carbon-12. Now, if it's called carbon, then we know it must have six protons. So this name here tells us everything that we need to know. It's carbon, so it's got six protons, and its mass is 12. So we know it has six neutrons as well. This would be called carbon-13. Again, must have six protons, but it has seven neutrons in this case. And we can have carbon-14 as well. This is what we do carbon dating with. Most of the carbon that you get from eating, ultimately comes from the atmosphere and goes into plants, is carbon-12, but some of it is carbon-14. Now, carbon-14 is unstable. Carbon-12 is nice and stable, which means that carbon-12s will just stay like that. Carbon-14 is unstable. It likes to decay. Just think about you building a Jenga tower and you're adding on one more piece, one more piece. The more you do it, the more unstable it becomes. Similar with atoms and neutrons. Now, when something decays, we mean it breaks, breaks down. Now, there's a couple of things that can happen when an atom breaks down. The first type that we have is alpha decay. Now, alpha is the first letter of the Greek alphabet, looks like a fish. Now, this happens with generally heavy elements like uranium. It's got 92 protons, it's massive, and its mass number is 238. This is a specific isotope of uranium. This is uranium-238. Incidentally, when we're talking about decays, we're not really concerned what's going on with the electrons around the outside of an atom. We're just looking at the nucleus because it's the nucleus that breaks down. It's the nucleus that, that decays, not the electrons. Now, when a heavy element decays with alpha decay, it gives out an alpha particle and its numbers are two and four. Two means that it must have two protons. And then four must mean that it's got four things all together. So that means that we've got two protons and two neutrons. Hang on a second, didn't we see this earlier? Yes, this is a helium nucleus. So we have our very heavy atom when it breaks down because it's unstable, it chucks out this helium nucleus. But if it's getting rid of this helium nucleus, then we're getting rid of two protons and two neutrons. So that must mean that whatever's left over has to be different. 92, but we're taking away two. So we're left with 90 protons. 238 nucleons, that's protons and neutrons, and we're taking away four. So it's just simple maths. This ends up being thorium it's actually turned into a different element because the proton number, the atomic number, has changed. Alpha radiation is stopped by paper or a few centimeters of air. It doesn't go very far. We say it's got a low penetrating ability, but it is highly ionizing. If this uranium was two feet away from you and it just gave out alpha radiation, then you'd probably be fine because the alpha radiation couldn't get to you. But you definitely do not want to breathe in some dust that is emitting alpha radiation or eat something that gives out alpha radiation because it'll mess up the DNA in your cells and can cause mutations, ultimately cancer. Because it's stopped very easily, it's used in smoke detectors. We have a source which gives out alpha particles and we have a detector here. When everything's hunky-dory, the alpha particles can go across and everything's fine. But what if some smoke gets in the way? Then the alpha particles aren't going to make it to the detector. So something's up and that's when the alarm sounds. Beta decay is the other type of decay when a nucleus breaks down. And this is what happens with lighter nuclei, like carbon-14. So let's get our carbon-14. We know it's carbon, so it's got to have six protons. 
And instead of giving out an alpha particle this time, it actually gives out a beta particle. Now a beta particle is just a fast moving electron. So what are its numbers going to be? Well, we said that the mass of an electron is effectively zero, so we're just gonna put zero there. But an electron is the opposite of a proton in some ways because it has the opposite charge. So this bottom number, the atomic number of an electron is minus one. Right, so if we've got 14 at the top, but uh, we're not getting rid of any mass, then that means we still have 14 for the mass of whatever's left over, whatever the carbon 14 turns into. Six on the other hand, well, six goes to something plus minus one. The atomic number actually goes up, it's turned to nitrogen. Hang on a second, if we've added a proton, but the mass hasn't changed at all, then what's going on? That means we've added a proton, but we've taken away a neutron. That's a little bit too convenient, isn't it? In fact, what's going on inside the nucleus when beta decay happens, a neutron turns into a proton. That's kind of weird. But as it does that, it gives out this fast moving electron as well. And that's what beta decay is. Beta decay is medium penetrating and it's medium ionizing as well. A good use for it is in a paper mill, for instance. We have our paper going through like that. We have our source and it's firing beta particles, these fast moving electrons through. And then we have this detector on the other side. If it's too thick, not enough beta particles get through. And the system knows that it has to make it thinner. Too many beta particles get through, that means that the paper is too thin, so it has to change the thickness to make it a little bit thicker. Just to recap, with alpha decay, we have an atom that gives out a helium nucleus, that's four and two, those numbers are always the same for an alpha particle, and you just take away those numbers from the first numbers to find what you got left. With beta decay, the mass number doesn't change because an electron basically has no mass, but we do have a neutron turning into a proton. So the proton number, the atomic number goes up by one. Don't forget that it's the atomic number on the bottom here that tells you what new element you've made. Beta radiation is stopped by a few millimeters of aluminium. So it's stopped fairly easily. The last type of radiation that you need to know about is gamma radiation. Now, whereas alpha particles and beta particles are particles, gamma radiation is a wave. It's a high energy, high frequency EM wave, electromagnetic wave. So it literally is just like light, but it's got a very high frequency. So it's much more dangerous. Having said that, it's not very ionizing. So why is it so dangerous? Well, it's because it can actually get to you. Alpha and beta, they're not that dangerous unless you inhale or swallow the source, the stuff that's actually giving it out. Gamma rays, though, they can come from anywhere and get to you and mess with your cells. It's not stopped, but it is reduced by lead and concrete. It is actually used as a medical tracer. So what they do is pump your veins with a source that emits gamma radiation, but it doesn't damage your cells that much because it goes straight out. It's also used in radiotherapy. You might also see something similar called gamma knife surgery. So ironically, gamma radiation, just like the other two types of radiation, can cause cancer, but gamma radiation can also be used to combat cancer. It can be fired at cancerous tissue, at a tumor, to kill the cancerous cells. Problem is, is that when you do this, this is your brain here, and we have a tumor that's right in the center. You don't really want to do surgery on that. So what you do instead is get a gamma source, fire the rays into the brain, but once you've done it from this angle, you actually move it around So that means that the healthy tissue gets as little dosage of gamma radiation as possible. This falling fish is the symbol for gamma, by the way. Like we said, that way it's focused on the tumor, but healthy tissue, healthy cells, 
gets small dose. Gamma radiation isn't really gamma decay because the nucleus doesn't actually change. All it does is gets rid of spare energy. I hope that helps you. If it did, then please don't forget to leave a like. And if you think I've missed anything or have any questions, then put it in a comment down below and I'll see you next time.